Unlike a typical election cycle, where we would discuss campaign speeches, different endorsements, policy differences between the candidates, and so on, well, this year's presidential race is a bit different. Covering the 2024 election mainly involves keeping up to date on the many legal cases that have been lobbied against President Trump. And indeed, over the last several days, there have been quite big developments in two of the ongoing legal battles facing President Trump. So let's go through them together, starting over in the state of Georgia. As we already discussed in a previous episode, the district attorney of Fulton County, Ms. Fannie Willis, she currently stands accused of hiring the man for whom she was allegedly a mistress to in order to be the lead prosecutor in the Trump case. That man had little to no experience in working on felony RICO cases, but somehow he wound up billing the county upwards of $650,000 before then turning around and buying Ms. Fannie Willis lavish vacations to places like Napa Valley, Florida, as well as the Caribbean. And while in our previous episode, we already discussed how Congress at the federal level is investigating the matter, well, Ms. Fannie Willis's problems are now hitting closer to home. That's because just yesterday, the actual presiding judge who's overseeing Trump's RICO case, well, he gave Ms. Fannie Willis a hard deadline for when she must respond to these allegations in writing. Quote, Judge Scott McAfee on Thursday ordered Fannie Willis to respond to the allegations in writing by February 2nd and has scheduled a hearing on the matter for February the 15th. Meaning that exactly two weeks from today, she has to submit her written response to these allegations. And then two weeks after that, there will be an actual live hearing where she has to explain herself to the judge about this alleged misuse of funds, as well as the alleged affair with the lead prosecutor. And this hearing will actually be very consequential to the real case. That's because if Ms. Fannie Willis is found to have engaged in improper behavior by the court, well, then very likely the case will be handed off to a different prosecutor within Fulton County, who might then just turn around and choose to drop the charges altogether against both President Trump as well as his co-defendants, which would very obviously be an absolutely wild turn of events. Regardless, let's wait two weeks to see what Ms. Fannie Willis comes up with in her written response that she again has to submit by February the 2nd. For your reference, the only response that she has given thus far was during a speech at a church last Sunday, wherein she chalked up all the allegations against her to racism. Let's see if that argument will stick in court. And now, let's take a super quick moment to smash those like and subscribe buttons and head on over to the state of Maine. As you are likely well aware, Maine became the second state in the nation to decide to drop President Trump's name from the 2024 ballot. That was a decision that was made by Maine's Secretary of State, Ms. Shenna Bellows, who believes that Trump is not actually qualified to remain on the ballot due to her interpretation of the 14th Amendment. Essentially, her belief that President Trump, quote unquote, engaged in an insurrection on January 6th of 2021. And so in order to save democracy, she decided to not allow the one million voters in her state to have the option of voting for President Trump. However, just like over in Colorado, her decision has been put on hold. That's because just two days ago, a superior court over in Maine has put a stay on the secretary's directive. Here's specifically what the court wrote in their order, which just for your reference was issued on January 17th, quote, the secretary is ordered to await the Supreme Court's decision in Trump versus Anderson, which is the Colorado case, and no later than 30 days after Anderson's issuance to issue a new ruling modifying, withdrawing, or confirming her prior ruling. Legally speaking, a stay of an administrative ruling is a rare event in Maine, but the court agrees that under these circumstances, it is appropriate. And so essentially what happened was that the Maine Superior Court, they put a hold on removing Trump from the ballot in the state until after the U.S. Supreme Court issues a ruling in the Colorado case, because whatever the Supreme Court decides in the Colorado case will actually then be applicable to the rest of the nation. And as such, quote, the Maine court ordered that President Trump would remain on the Maine ballot unless the Supreme Court found him disqualified to hold the office of president by March 5th. In other words, they fully deferred the decision over to the U.S. Supreme Court. Now, in the U.S. Supreme Court, in that particular case, President Trump's legal team has just submitted their legal brief. You can see it up on screen for yourself, laying out their argument as to why he should be able to remain on the ballot. And frankly, Trump's legal team did not mince words in their legal briefing, writing that, quote, the court should put a swift and decisive end to these ballot disqualification efforts, which threaten to disenfranchise tens of millions of Americans and which promise to unleash chaos and bedlam if other state courts and state officials follow Colorado's lead and exclude the likely Republican presidential nominee from their ballots. And then in terms of their action,